Welcome to the Cheating Wife Stories channel. You really think he'll ever figure it out? You've done a great job covering it up, sweetheart. I'm so proud of you. Adrian froze. The familiar sound of his mother-in-law's voice floated from the bedroom, but what she said sent a chill through him. He had arrived home early, planning to surprise Madison with dinner. But now, all thoughts of their evening together vanished. Standing outside the slightly ajar door, Adrian strained to hear more. His heart pounded in his chest. Was this about him? His fingers gripped the grocery bag handles tighter as he heard Madison's muffled laughter from inside. What the hell does she mean by covering it up, he thought. He stepped closer to the door, careful not to make a sound. His pulse quickened and his breath became shallow, trying to make sense of what was happening. From inside, he could hear Madison's nervous laughter mixed with the low hum of her mother's reassuring tone. I don't know how much longer I can keep this up, Madison said, her voice cracking slightly. But so far that loser is clueless. Adrian's heart sank like a stone. A strange sensation flooded his chest, an unfamiliar mix of fear, anger, and betrayal. His fingers twitched on the doorknob, wanting to burst in and demand an explanation. But something stopped him. He wasn't ready yet. He needed to understand what was happening first. He edged closer, peering through the narrow gap in the door. Madison sat on the edge of their bed, her back turned to him, talking softly with her mother on the phone. She wasn't pacing or stressed. No. She seemed composed, almost relieved. Her mother's voice crackled again. I told you, you've got nothing to worry about. Adrian's always been trusting. Too trusting, if you ask me. He's not going to figure this out unless you slip up. Just stick to the plan. Adrian's stomach twisted into knots. His mother-in-law's words confirmed what he feared. This was about him. But what plan? What were they hiding? His mind raced through a thousand possibilities, each one worse than the last. He watched Madison, who ran a hand through her hair, letting out a soft sigh. I know, Mom, but the guilt's starting to eat at me. I didn't expect it to go on this long. Sixteen years is a long time to keep a secret. Sixteen years. Adrian's world began to tilt. Sixteen years. That was the length of their marriage. He staggered back from the door, his knees threatening to buckle. A sickening realization began to form, though he wasn't ready to admit it. He couldn't. He needed more. Sixteen years, our entire marriage. What secret? His mind raced, connecting dots that he didn't want to connect. Adrian slowly set the grocery bags on the hallway floor, his movements mechanical. He no longer cared about the dinner. The loving husband who had walked into the house, eager to surprise his wife, was gone. In his place stood a man on the verge of discovering the truth that had been hidden from him for far too long. He leaned closer again, barely breathing. Madison's voice dropped, tinged with frustration. I'm just scared, Mom. I never meant for it to go on this long, but every time I tried to end it, I couldn't. You know how it is. The kids, the way everything's tangled together. Her mother chuckled on the other end. Honey, you've always been good at keeping things separate. Adrian's never had a reason to question you. You've handled this perfectly. You just need to stay calm and not overthink it. The important thing is you've kept the family together. That's all that matters. Adrian pressed his palm against the wall to steady himself. His mouth went dry, and his vision blurred with rage. They were talking about him as if he were some blind fool, an outsider in his own marriage. He'd been faithful, loving, devoted, everything a husband was supposed to be. And all this time, she'd been lying to him. He felt the sudden urge to burst into the room and confront her, to shout, to demand the truth. But something held him back. If he went in now, he'd just get more lies. He needed the truth. He needed to be sure of what he was dealing with. He stepped back from the door, letting the conversation fade into the background as his mind began working. He had to figure this out. Madison wasn't going to admit anything outright. Not to him. Not now. 
but there were ways to uncover the truth. Adrian backed away from the bedroom, careful not to make a sound. He grabbed his phone from his pocket and scrolled through his contacts, his hands trembling. He didn't know what he was looking for at first, but then it hit him. DNA tests. He'd read about them online. They could tell you a lot about your heritage, your family tree. My kids, he thought. His hands froze over the screen. His children. They were everything to him. But what if they weren't his? The very thought made him feel sick. But the nagging doubt, the one he had always dismissed as irrational, now screamed for attention. His thumb hovered over the button to search for a DNA testing service. He hesitated, feeling a wave of guilt. If he did this, there was no going back. He would either confirm his worst fears or prove himself paranoid. But the conversation he'd overheard left no room for trust. He pressed the button, and within moments, he had ordered a test. His throat tightened as he stared at the confirmation on his screen. It would be delivered in a few days. Soon, he would know the truth. Adrian took one last look down the hallway, where Madison's laughter had now faded. He no longer saw her as the woman he had loved all these years. Now she was a stranger, someone who had kept secrets from him, someone who had shattered the life they had built together. As he bent down to pick up the grocery bags, the weight of betrayal settled heavily on his chest. He headed to the kitchen, placing the groceries on the counter, moving slowly, his mind elsewhere. He didn't confront her that night. Instead, they ate dinner in relative silence, Madison unaware of the storm brewing inside him. She smiled across the table, making small talk about the kid's school, her day, and upcoming plans for the weekend. Adrian nodded, forcing smiles, but his heart wasn't in it. He barely tasted the food. Every word she said felt like another lie. He would wait for the results. He would uncover the truth. Until then, he would play his part, the clueless husband she believed him to be. But inside, Adrian was already preparing for what came next, and when the truth finally came out, nothing would ever be the same again. The days after overhearing Madison's conversation with her mother were a blur for Adrian. His thoughts twisted around what he had heard, replaying the words over and over in his mind. At first, he had tried to ignore it, hoping he had misunderstood, but the doubt was like a splinter lodged in his brain, impossible to remove. What was she hiding? The question gnawed at him. He couldn't bring himself to ask her directly. Every time he thought about confronting her, he saw the kids' faces. Layla, Jack, and little Stella, all so innocent, their lives untouched by the tension now boiling inside him. He couldn't risk tearing apart their lives without knowing the truth. One night, long after the kids had gone to bed and Madison was in the shower, Adrian sat alone at the dining table, staring at his laptop. His fingers hovered over the keyboard, as if by some magical stroke, the truth would appear on the screen. He typed DNA testing into the search bar and clicked through the results, his heart pounding. He knew this was a step he could never undo. The thought had always been at the back of his mind. Layla's olive-toned skin, Jack's jet-black hair, Stella's deep brown eyes, they didn't quite match his side of the family. But Madison had always laughed it off, saying they took after her distant relatives. Genes are funny like that, she'd say. He had believed her until now. Adrian scrolled through different testing kits, reading about how they could trace ancestry, reveal health risks, and most importantly, confirm paternity. His eyes scanned the price list and the turnaround time for results. Two to three weeks. It seemed like an eternity, but he needed answers. What if they're not mine? The thought made his stomach churn. His kids are kids. The very idea that they could belong to someone else, that the life he had built for sixteen years was a lie, was almost too much to bear. But there was no turning back now. He clicked order on a testing kit. The confirmation message popped up on the screen. It was done. A sense of finality settled over him, heavier than he expected. He leaned back in his chair, staring blankly at the screen. Now, all he could do was wait. The test kit arrived three days later, 
delivered in a small, inconspicuous box. Adrian picked it up from the doorstep, his hands trembling slightly. He glanced over his shoulder, checking that no one was watching, and quickly slipped it under his jacket. The kids were in the living room, and Madison was on the phone with a friend. They were none the wiser. He made his way to the bathroom, locking the door behind him. Opening the box, he pulled out the instructions, reading them carefully. It was a simple process, just a quick swab from the kids, a few forms to fill out, and then mail it back. He had already planned how he would do it. The kids were used to his bedtime routine, and getting them to brush their teeth every night was normal. It would be easy to collect the samples. That night, after dinner, he went upstairs with the kids, settling them into bed one by one. Layla, the eldest at fourteen, was already half asleep by the time he kissed her goodnight. Jack, ten, was engrossed in a comic book, barely looking up as Adrian tucked him in. But Stella, at only six, was still full of energy, bouncing around in her pajamas. Time for bed, kiddo, Adrian said, smiling despite the storm raging inside him. Can I have a bedtime story? Stella asked, her big brown eyes pleading. Of course, he said, sitting on the edge of her bed. As he read to her, his mind wandered. He stared at her dark curls and her sweet, innocent face, wondering if she was really his. The thought tore at his heart, but he pushed it down. He had to do this, after the story, he coaxed her into brushing her teeth. Open wide, he said playfully, gently swabbing the inside of her cheek with a Q-tip as she laughed. He repeated the process with Jack and Layla, slipping the samples into the small labeled bags that came with the kit. It was done. The kids had no idea, and neither did Madison. Adrian felt a mix of guilt and relief as he packed the samples into the prepaid envelope. He mailed it off the next morning, watching as the package disappeared into the post office slot. Now all he could do was wait. The waiting was excruciating. Days felt like weeks as Adrian went through the motions of his daily life. At work he found it impossible to concentrate. Every time Madison spoke to him, every time the kids called him dad, a part of him felt like he was living a lie. But he said nothing, kept his face neutral, and waited for the results that would either confirm his worst fears or give him the peace of mind he desperately needed. One evening, Madison noticed his distraction. They were sitting together on the couch, the kids upstairs, watching a movie. She leaned in, touching his arm. You've been quiet lately, she said softly, her eyes searching his. Adrian forced a smile. Yeah, just work stuff. A bit stressed, that's all. She frowned, clearly not convinced, but didn't press him further. Instead, she shifted closer, resting her head on his shoulder. Adrian stiffened slightly, feeling the weight of her against him, but he didn't move away. The woman sitting beside him, the woman he had loved for sixteen years, was possibly lying to him about the very foundation of their lives. But he couldn't confront her, not yet. Two weeks later, the results arrived in his email. Adrian sat at the dining room table again, staring at his phone, the unopened email glaring back at him like a ticking bomb. His hands were clammy as he tapped the message, and his heart raced as the page loaded. The results were clear. His hands shook as he read them again, the words blurring before his eyes. His worst fears were confirmed. The kids were not his. None of them. Adrian dropped the phone, pushing his chair back from the table. His chest felt tight, like he couldn't breathe. The truth he had been dreading for weeks was now staring him in the face, and there was no escaping it. He stood, pacing the room, his mind spinning. What do I do now? His entire world had just been torn apart, and the woman he trusted most in the world had shattered it. His children, Marco's children, weren't his. The weight of it all crashed down on him, and for the first time in years, Adrian felt truly lost. But one thing was certain. Madison's betrayal had changed everything. Now he had to decide what came next. Weeks later, the day Adrian had both dreaded and anticipated finally arrived. Another test. 
a small unassuming envelope sat on the kitchen counter. His name was printed neatly on the front, but the contents inside held the potential to destroy everything. His hands trembled as he reached for it, his heart racing. He stood there for a moment, just staring at it, before ripping the seal open. The paper felt heavy in his hands as he unfolded it, his eyes darting across the words. His gaze locked onto a section in bold print. Spanish heritage. Adrian blinked, his brain struggling to process what he was seeing. He read it again, slower this time, as if the meaning might change if he looked at it differently. Spanish. It didn't make any sense. His family had no ties to Spain. He was Irish. Madison was English. But the bloodline that had shown up on the test was undeniably Spanish. His mind raced, trying to make sense of it. But only one possibility came to the forefront. His stepbrother, Marco. Marco's father was Spanish. Adrian felt the world tilt beneath him as the connection hit like a punch to the gut. His legs gave out, and he collapsed into the nearest chair. Marco. Of course, Marco. The images flashed through his mind in rapid succession. His children's faces, their darker skin, their black hair, the subtle features that had never quite resembled his. For years, he had told himself they looked more like Madison's side of the family. For years, Madison had reassured him, smiled at him, kissed him, knowing all along the truth. His children weren't his. The thought seared through his mind like fire, burning away any last shred of doubt. He felt sick, his stomach churned, his chest tightened, and he bent over, gripping the edge of the table, struggling to breathe. His hands shook violently as he set the papers down, his eyes still wide with disbelief. Sixteen years, sixteen years of marriage, sixteen years of love, trust, and loyalty. He had dedicated his life to Madison, to their family. And all this time, she had been sleeping with Marco, his stepbrother. Adrian stood up abruptly, knocking the chair over in the process. It clattered to the floor, but he didn't care. His heart pounded so hard, he could hear it in his ears. His chest heaved as he paced back and forth across the kitchen, his mind in a fog of anger, hurt, and confusion. His phone buzzed on the counter, jolting him back to the present. He picked it up, seeing a message from Madison. Running late from work. We'll be home in an hour. Love you. Love you. The words felt like a mockery. His vision blurred with rage. He threw the phone down on the counter. His jaw clenched so tightly it ached. How dare she? How could she pretend everything was normal? Like she hadn't ripped his life apart. Adrian's mind turned to his family, his parents, his siblings. They had known. He was certain of it now. They had all been complicit in this twisted betrayal. They had covered for Madison, for Marco, while he played the fool. The sense of betrayal cut deeper than any wound he had ever known. His own family. His blood. He slammed his fist on the table, the impact reverberating through the room. The anger inside him swelled, but it was quickly overtaken by a wave of cold realization. What now? He could confront Madison. He could wait for her to walk through the door and lay the truth bare in front of her. But what good would it do? She would lie, just as she had for sixteen years. She would beg for forgiveness, maybe even cry. But none of it would change the truth. He could confront Marco. Adrian's blood boiled at the thought of his stepbrother, his friend, his confidant, betraying him like this. The idea of Marco smiling to his face, all while sleeping with his wife, made Adrian feel sick. He wanted to drive over to Marco's house, grab him by the collar, and demand answers. But deep down, he knew it wouldn't change anything either. His eyes fell on the family photos lining the wall. Pictures of birthdays, holidays, school events. They stared back at him, hollow now, empty reminders of a life built on lies. His gaze settled on a photo of the five of them, Adrian, Madison, and the kids, smiling on a family vacation. Adrian's heart ached as he realized that even the memories he cherished were tainted. Every smile, every laugh, 
Every moment of happiness was now stained with the knowledge of what had been happening behind his back. But this wasn't just about Madison and Marco. His parents had known. His siblings had known. The realization that his entire family had been in on this betrayal was a wound so deep that Adrian didn't know if it would ever heal. They had watched him, year after year, raising children that weren't his. They had let him play the part of the loving husband and father while they stood by, silently complicit. The room seemed to close in around him as Adrian leaned against the counter, gripping it tightly, his body shaking with the weight of it all. What the hell do I do now? He couldn't stay here. He couldn't face Madison. Not right now. He needed space, time to think. He needed to clear his head, to figure out what came next. Without a word, he grabbed his jacket from the hook by the door and slipped out of the house. The cold evening air hit him like a slap in the face. But he welcomed it. It cleared the fog in his mind, even if just for a moment. He started walking, his feet moving aimlessly through the quiet neighborhood. His thoughts raced, bouncing from one possibility to another. He could leave, just walk away from it all. But then what? Where would that leave the kids? They were innocent in all of this, and despite everything, he loved them. But could he continue to be their father, knowing they weren't his? He walked for what felt like hours, but no answers came. By the time he returned home, the house was dark. Madison had come home, put the kids to bed, and gone to sleep herself, unaware of the storm that was about to descend on their lives. Adrian stood in the doorway, staring at the house, the house he had built for his family, the family that wasn't his. His hands clenched into fists at his sides as the anger surged again. But this time, it wasn't just anger. It was resolve. I will not be the fool anymore. Adrian's mind was made up. Tomorrow, everything would change. The following evening, Adrian couldn't keep it inside any longer. The weight of the betrayal had gnawed at him all day. By the time he stepped into the house, he felt like a ticking bomb ready to explode. Madison was sitting at the kitchen table, casually scrolling through her phone, a half-empty cup of tea in front of her. She looked peaceful like nothing in the world was wrong, completely unaware of the storm that was about to break. Adrian stood in the doorway, his heart pounding, his fists clenched at his sides. His mind raced with everything he had discovered, the rage swirling in his chest like a fire he couldn't extinguish. He swallowed hard, trying to steady himself before speaking, but when the words came, they were cold and sharp. Madison, Adrian's voice was low, but there was a dangerous edge to it. She looked up from her phone, her smile fading when she saw the look in his eyes. There was no warmth there, no love, only anger, cold and raw. What's wrong? She asked, her voice uncertain, but she didn't move from her spot at the table. Without saying another word, Adrian reached into his pocket and pulled out the folded DNA test results. His hand shook slightly as he threw the papers onto the table in front of her. They scattered across the wood, some falling to the floor, but the one with the bold Spanish heritage text stayed on top. Explain this, Adrian demanded, his voice barely containing the fury bubbling inside him. Madison's face went pale as her eyes landed on the paper. She froze, her hands trembling slightly as she set her phone down. Dully, what is this? She stammered, though her voice betrayed the panic rising in her chest. Her eyes darted between the paper and Adrian, as if hoping it wasn't what she thought it was. You know exactly what it is, Adrian spat, his words dripping with venom. It's a DNA test. And guess what I found out? Our kids, your kids, they got Spanish blood. He slammed his fist down on the table, making Madison jump. I'm not Spanish, Madison, but Marco is. The color drained from Madison's face. Her mouth opened as if to speak, but no words came out. Her hands shook as she reached for the paper, but Adrian could see the terror in her eyes. She wasn't confused. She was caught. Adrian, I can explain this. She finally managed. Adrian let out a bitter laugh. 
the sound harsh and filled with years of pent-up pain. Explain. How do you explain having an affair with my stepbrother for sixteen years, Madison? His voice cracked, the raw emotion of the moment finally breaking through. Sixteen years. Our entire marriage has been a goddamn lie. Tears welled up in Madison's eyes, spilling down her cheeks as she stood up, trying to approach him. Her hands reached out as if to calm him, but Adrian stepped back, his eyes hardening. Please, Adrian, listen to me. It was some mistakes, she cried, her voice desperate. I was young. I was confused. It only happened because. You weren't confused for sixteen years, Madison, Adrian roared, cutting her off. His voice echoed through the house, filled with the pain of years of betrayal. You didn't just make one mistake. You had an affair with Marco behind my back for sixteen years. You gave me children that aren't even mine. And you kept me in the dark while our families. You gave me children that aren't even mine, and you kept me in the dark while our families. Our families helped you cover it up. I was a fool. A goddamn fool. Madison's sobs grew louder, her face red and streaked with tears. She dropped to her knees in front of him, clutching at his pant legs, her voice breaking as she begged for his forgiveness. Please, Adrian, please. I love you. I always have. I made a mistake, but it didn't mean anything. It was just. It didn't mean anything. Adrian snapped, his voice full of disbelief. You slept with my stepbrother for years. You lied to me every single day. Let me believe I was the father of those kids, and you tell me it didn't mean anything. Madison sobbed harder, her grip on him tightening as she looked up at him with pleading eyes. It was a mistake, Adrian. I didn't want to hurt you. I didn't know how to stop. Please, just give me a chance to make it right. We can get through this. Adrian shook his head, feeling the surge of disgust wash over him. He ganked his leg free from her grasp, stepping back as if her touch burned him. There's nothing to fix, Madison. You've ruined everything. How am I supposed to trust anything you say after this? How am I supposed to believe that anything we had was real? Madison looked up at him, her face drenched in tears, her breath hitching between sobs. Adrian, I swear, I love you. I never loved Marco. It was just. Don't. Adrian cut her off, his voice quieter now, but no less cold. Don't lie to me anymore. There was a long silence between them. Madison remained on the floor her sobs growing softer, more desperate. Adrian stared down at her, feeling nothing but emptiness where his love for her had once been. I gave you everything, he said finally, his voice thick with emotion. I gave you my life, my trust, my love, and you gave me lies. Madison shook her head, her words coming out in broken fragments. Adrian, please, the kids, they love you. You're their father in every way that matters. Don't do this to them. Don't walk away from them. The mention of the kids brought a fresh wave of pain to Adrian's chest, but he forced himself to stay firm. I love them, he said softly. But you stole their real father from them. You took that choice away from all of us. Madison looked up at him, eyes wide with fear. So what now? Are you just going to leave us? Throw away everything we've built. Adrian stared at her for a long moment, the silence between them thick with finality. Then he shook his head, his voice flat, detached. You threw it all away a long time ago. With that, Adrian turned and walked away. Madison called after him, but he didn't look back. The front door closed behind him with a quiet click, the sound echoing in the stillness of the night. As he stepped outside, the air hit his face, and for the first time in weeks, he felt something other than pain. It wasn't relief. It was far from it. But it was clarity. The life he thought he had was over, but now he could start over. For the first time in years, Adrian felt free. The days after Adrian confronted Madison were suffocating with tension. The house, once filled with warmth and laughter, was now a place of cold silence. 
Madison had tried everything. She begged on her knees, her tears endless as she pleaded for forgiveness. Adrian, please, I swear I ended things with Marco years ago. She'd cry, but her words barely registered. They sounded hollow to Adrian, like echoes bouncing off the walls of a life that was already shattered. He sat across from her at the kitchen table one evening, her hands gripping his, shaking. Adrian, we can fix this. Please, we've built so much together. Don't throw it all away. Adrian stared at her, his eyes empty. You threw it away the moment you started sleeping with him, he said, his voice steady but cold. Sixteen years, Madison. How do you fix that? She broke down again, sobbing into her hands, but Adrian didn't move. His decision was made, and nothing she said or did would change that. The weight of her betrayal was too much. He couldn't see a future with her anymore. All the love, the trust, it had evaporated the moment he discovered the truth. And it wasn't just her betrayal. It was everyone's. His anger grew into something colder, more calculated. He didn't just want to leave Madison. He wanted everyone who had deceived him to feel the same pain he did. The following week, Adrian confronted his family. He started with his parents. He invited them over one evening, telling them he had something important to discuss. When they arrived, the tension in the air was palpable. Adrian didn't waste time with pleasantries. He threw the DNA results on the coffee table in front of them, just as he had with Madison. His father picked them up, his hands shaking slightly as he read through the papers. What is this, Adrian? His father asked, though there was a hint of guilt in his voice. His mother sat stiffly beside him, her face already pale. Adrian leaned forward, his eyes dark with fury. It's a DNA test, he said, and it proves that my kids aren't mine. They're Marco's. His mother's hand flew to her mouth, her eyes wide with shock, but Adrian wasn't fooled. He could see the guilt written all over her face. You knew, he said, his voice low but trembling with barely controlled rage. Didn't you? His father cleared his throat, avoiding Adrian's gaze. We, we didn't want to hurt you, son. It was complicated. Complicated. Adrian's voice erupted, causing both his parents to flinch. I trusted you. You're my parents, and you kept this from me. You let me raise kids that weren't mine. You let me build a life on a lie. And you never said a word. His mother's eyes filled with tears. We thought it was for the best, Adrian. You were happy. Happy? Adrian cut her off, standing abruptly. Do you think I'm happy now? Knowing you betrayed me. Knowing you stood by and let this happen. His father finally met his gaze, his voice breaking. We didn't know how to tell you. We thought it would destroy you, and we didn't want that. Adrian shook his head in disbelief. You didn't want to destroy me. Well, congratulations. You did. His mother started to cry, reaching out for him. But Adrian stepped back, his face hard. I trusted all of you, he said quietly, his voice filled with raw emotion. And you betrayed me. Every single one of you. He turned on his heel and left, leaving his parents sitting in silence, their faces etched with guilt and sorrow. Next, Adrian confronted his siblings. His younger sister, Lisa, had always been close to him, or so he had thought. When he showed her the DNA results, her face paled just like their parents. She opened her mouth to speak, but Adrian cut her off. Don't bother lying, Lisa, he said coldly. I know you knew. You've been covering for Marco this whole time, haven't you? Lisa's eyes filled with tears. Adrian... I didn't know how to tell you, she whispered, her voice shaky. I thought it would destroy you. You all keep saying that, Adrian snapped, his anger flaring again. But you know what's worse? Knowing that the people I loved and trusted the most have been lying to me for years. You all sat by, watching me raise kids that weren't mine, watching me live a lie. And you said nothing. Lisa broke down, her hands covering her face as she sobbed. I'm sorry, Adrian. I never wanted this to happen. Adrian's voice softened, but only slightly. 
It's too late for apologies, Lisa. I don't think I'll ever be able to forgive any of you. He left her crying in her living room, the same sense of betrayal weighing down on him with every step. Adrian didn't stop there. He confronted Madison's family next, delivering the same cold truth to them. They too had known. Madison's parents had been complicit, helping their daughter hide her affair, helping her build a false life with Adrian. They offered the same weak excuses, but by then, Adrian had heard enough. He didn't care about their reasons. All that mattered was that they had lied to him too. With every confrontation, Adrian felt a part of himself growing colder, harder. He wasn't just angry anymore. He was determined. He wanted them all to suffer, to feel the same pain he had felt. So without a word of warning, he packed his bags. He didn't leave a note. He didn't tell anyone where he was going. He simply disappeared, leaving Madison, the kids, and both of their families behind. He severed ties with everyone. He changed his phone number, deleted his social media accounts, and vanished without a trace. The life he had known was over. There was nothing left for him here but pain and betrayal, and he refused to be part of it any longer. As Adrian drove away from the town that had been his home for so long, his mind raced with thoughts of revenge. He wasn't just going to leave. He was going to make them regret everything. Madison, Marco, his parents, his siblings, Madison's parents, all of them had betrayed him. And they would all pay. For five years, Adrian disappeared from the lives of everyone who once knew him. It was as if he had vanished into thin air. He had meticulously erased every trace of himself, cutting off all contact, changing his phone number, and deleting any online presence that might give him away. Even his closest friends, those who weren't involved in the betrayal, were left with no explanation. He traveled across continents, settling in a different country, far from the suffocating reminders of his old life. Adrian no longer felt like the man he used to be. His days were spent rebuilding himself, not just physically, but mentally and emotionally. He had to become someone else, a person who could survive without the people who had stabbed him in the back. His new life was quiet, solitary. He worked odd jobs at first, never staying in one place too long, but always keeping his mind sharp. Slowly, he built a new career, one free of the entanglements that had once bound him. He became proficient in real estate, flipping properties in small towns, and making a decent living for himself. No one knew his real name here, and he preferred it that way. But Adrian wasn't idle. Even as he rebuilt his life, a part of him still kept watch over the wreckage he had left behind. He didn't need to be there physically to know what was happening. With the help of a few discreet investigators and his knowledge of the digital world, Adrian kept tabs on Madison, Marco, and the rest of his family from afar. It wasn't long before Adrian found his first opportunity for revenge. One day, while sifting through information on Marco, he stumbled across something that made his blood run cold. Marco's business, a mid-sized construction company, was involved in some shady deals. Adrian hired an investigator to dig deeper, and what he uncovered was more than enough to set things in motion. Marco had been cutting corners on his contracts, bribing city officials, and using substandard materials in his projects. It was all carefully hidden behind a veneer of respectability, but Adrian knew it wouldn't take much to bring the entire operation crashing down. Armed with this knowledge, Adrian composed an anonymous email, attaching all the evidence he had collected and sent it off to the authorities. He sat back and waited. A month later, the news broke. Marco's company was under investigation for fraud and safety violations. The story hit the local papers first, but it wasn't long before larger news outlets picked it up. Within weeks, Marco's business was in freefall. Clients pulled out, the city revoked his permits, and lawsuits piled up. Marco was ruined. Adrian watched it all unfold from the comfort of his new home, thousands of miles away. There was no satisfaction in his eyes, no gleeful smile. This wasn't about pleasure. It was about balance, about making sure Marco paid for the lies, the deceit, 
and the years Adrian had lost. Madison, on the other hand, was left to deal with the fallout of her own actions. Without Adrian's financial support, she struggled to make ends meet. She had no idea where he was or how to reach him. The letters she sent, hundreds of them, went unanswered. She had emailed him, left messages on every old number she could remember, but nothing. Adrian had made sure to sever every line of communication. Alone, with three children to raise, Madison's life fell apart. She was forced to sell the house they had shared, downsizing to a small apartment in a less desirable part of town. Her family, once so willing to cover up her secrets, now distanced themselves from her. With Marco's business in ruins, her former lover had his own troubles, and he offered her no help either. The affair that had destroyed Adrian's life became nothing more than a bitter reminder of her mistakes. Adrian read every email she sent. He saw the desperation in her words. She begged for forgiveness, for a chance to explain herself. But her words rang hollow to him. She had made her choice, and now she would live with the consequences. Five years after he disappeared, Adrian's plan had come full circle. He had destroyed the lives of those who had wronged him, not just Marco and Madison, but the entire network of people who had kept him in the dark. His parents, siblings, and Madison's family all suffered in their own ways, either financially or socially. They had conspired against him, and now they were paying the price. But Adrian wasn't a man without heart. He had spent countless nights lying awake, questioning whether this path of vengeance was truly the right one. There had been moments, brief flashes, where he almost considered reaching out, almost considered letting go. But then he would remember the pain, the betrayal, the years stolen from him, and any thought of reconciliation would vanish as quickly as it came. The final blow to Madison came one evening when Adrian learned she had filed for bankruptcy. He had watched her fall slowly, bit by bit. But this was the culmination of all her struggles. She had lost the house, lost her reputation, and now she had lost everything. Madison's last email was unlike the others. There was no anger, no pleas for forgiveness. Instead, it was filled with resignation. Adrian, it read, I don't know if you'll ever read this, but I have to try. I've lost everything. The kids, they miss you. We all do. I know I made a terrible mistake, and I don't expect you to forgive me. I just wanted you to know. I'm sorry. For everything. Adrian closed the email, staring at the screen for a long time. The bitterness inside him had been his fuel for so long. But as he looked at those words, something shifted in him. He wasn't sure if it was pity or maybe just the exhaustion of carrying the weight of his anger for so long. But one thing was clear. He wasn't the same man anymore. The vengeance, the destruction, it had all been necessary. But now it was over. Adrian closed the laptop, stood, and walked out onto the balcony of his apartment, feeling the cool night air against his face. Somewhere far away, Madison and Marco were paying for their sins. But here, in his new life... Adrian was free, and for the first time in years, he allowed himself to let go. Months after Adrian had buried his past and fully embraced his new life, the ringing of his phone shattered the quiet serenity of his day. He had been sitting in his study, going over some work emails, when the unknown number appeared on the screen. His finger hovered over the decline button, but something made him hesitate. On an impulse, he answered, Hello. Adrian's voice was cautious. There was a brief pause on the other end before a woman's voice, steady and confident, broke the silence. Hello, Adrian. I think you'll want to hear this. Adrian's heart skipped a beat. He didn't recognize the voice, yet there was a familiarity in her tone, an unsettling calmness that instantly put him on guard. Who is this? He demanded, his voice tightening. I'm someone who knows a lot about your wife's affair, the woman said bluntly. There are details you don't know yet. Adrian sat up straight, his body tensing. He thought he had uncovered all the lies, all the secrets. 
his ex-wife Madison, and his stepbrother Marco had already paid the price for their betrayal. But now, this woman's words hinted at something deeper, something darker. What details? Adrian asked, the tension thickening in his voice. His mind raced, imagining all the possible things she could be referring to. Had there been others? Was there another layer of betrayal he had missed? The woman chuckled softly, as if amused by his unease. This isn't something I can explain over the phone, she said smoothly. Meet me, and I'll tell you everything. Adrian's pulse quickened. The last thing he wanted was to be dragged back into the mess he had left behind. He had rebuilt his life from the ground up, away from the toxic web of lies that had once ensnared him. But the curiosity gnawed at him. What more could there be? I'm not interested in games, Adrian said coldly. If you have something to say, say it now. The woman sighed, sounding almost disappointed. Adrian, I understand you don't trust easily anymore. But believe me when I say that this information will change everything. It's bigger than you think. If you don't hear me out, you'll regret it. Adrian's fingers tightened around his phone. A part of him wanted to hang up, to walk away from whatever this was and never look back. But the uncertainty was unbearable. He couldn't shake the feeling that there was one last truth he needed to confront. Fine, Adrian said after a long pause. Where and when? The meeting was arranged for the following day at a small cafe in a town a few miles away. Adrian didn't tell anyone about the call. He didn't want to drag his new life into this old nightmare. This was something he had to deal with on his own. The next morning, he arrived at the cafe early. He sat at a corner table, his back to the wall, his eyes scanning every person who walked through the door. His nerves were on edge, his mind swirling with questions. Who was this woman? How did she know about Madison and Marco? And what could she possibly have to tell him that would change everything? At exactly 10 a.m., a tall woman with dark sunglasses and a long coat entered the café. She spotted him immediately and made her way over to his table. As she approached, Adrian noticed her features were sharp, almost predatory. There was something unsettling about the way she carried herself, confident, but with an underlying tension. Adrian, she greeted him with a nod, sliding into the seat across from him. He remained silent, studying her, waiting for her to make the first move. She took off her sunglasses, revealing piercing blue eyes that locked onto his. My name is Rachel, she said simply. I worked with Marco. Closely. Adrian's stomach turned at the mention of his stepbrother's name. Even after all these years, hearing it still brought a flood of anger and resentment. What do you want, Rachel? He asked, his voice clipped. She leaned forward, lowering her voice. I want to help you. You see, I was involved with Marco for years, long before Madison ever came into the picture. Adrian blinked, his confusion deepening. What are you talking about? What does this have to do with me? Rachel smiled, though it didn't reach her eyes. Marco had a lot of secrets, Adrian. He wasn't just sleeping with Madison. He was running a lot of side operations, shady ones, and your family. They weren't just covering for him because of the affair. Adrian's mind raced, trying to make sense of her words. Side operations? You mean illegal? Very illegal, Rachel confirmed, her voice barely above a whisper. And your parents, your siblings, they knew about it. They were all involved. That's why they protected him, why they kept the affair hidden from you. It wasn't just about family loyalty. They were profiting from his schemes. The air seemed to leave the room as Adrian processed her words. His parents, his siblings, he had already felt the sting of their betrayal when he learned they had known about Madison and Marco's affair. But this, this was on a completely different level. Why are you telling me this now? Adrian asked, his voice hardening. What do you want? Rachel leaned back, her eyes never leaving his. Marco is dead, she said flatly. And with him gone, there's no one to protect the rest of them. I figured you should know the truth, so you can decide what to do with it. Adrian sat in stunned silence, 
his family, the people who had raised him, who had stood by him, or so he thought, had been part of something far darker than he could have imagined. He didn't know what to say, what to think. All he knew was that the final piece of the puzzle had just fallen into place, and the web of betrayal he had uncovered was even more tangled than he ever imagined. I'll give you time to think, Rachel said, standing up. She slid a small envelope across the table toward him. This is everything you need to know. Do with it what you will. Adrian watched her walk out of the cafe, leaving him alone with the envelope and the weight of this new truth. His past wasn't just a story of infidelity. It was a story of corruption, lies, and manipulation that went far beyond what he had ever imagined. And now, it was up to him to decide how the final chapter would end. Thanks to everyone who took the time to listen to today's stories. If you enjoyed it, please consider liking and subscribing if you haven't already. Feel free to share your thoughts on the events in the comments below. Take care.